What's up guys, Kudokun here. Today we're going to take a look at Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux for the 3DS. For the uninformed, Strange Journey was a Shin Megami Tensei spinoff that originally came out for the DS, but they decided to soup it up and put it on the 3DS. Full disclosure here, I didn't actually play the original, so I won't be able to make every single comparison between the two, but I did look up a list of the major comparisons, so I know what they added in the new one and what they didn't. And the changes are actually pretty major. For the most part though, I'll be talking about this game as its own game and not comparing it to the original so much, but rather how the remake holds up today. So as far as looks go, the game looks fine. It doesn't look like they made too many changes from the original DS remake aside from touching up some pixels to make it look nicer on the 3DS. It's definitely not the huge graphical leap that we saw with Radiant Historia. But on its own, the game looks fine, honestly. The environments are very dark, and that might turn some people off. There are a lot more colorful environments in games like the Persona series or uh, the Devil Survivor games. But this is also a very adult game with a very adult story, so it sort of matches the mood. The graphics and the aesthetic here don't impress me by any means, but I also don't think they look bad. The story here is an old German experiment is actually coming true, revolving around something called the Schwarzwelt. The theory of the Schwarzwelt is if we use too many of the Earth's resources too quickly, eventually the Earth will start fighting back in some way. The Schwarzwelt in this story is a demon portal that's slowly opening up and devouring the Earth. The idea is that the demons are going to show up, kill everybody, and then the Earth's resources will stop being taken. The entire Earth is banded together and created a small strike team that will go into the Swartzwelt to figure out what the cause is and figure out a way to stop it, and that's where you come in. You play as a member of the strike team, which of course you do, because if you played as a member of something else, then there wouldn't be as much fighting in action and that wouldn't be as interesting. The story is really character driven. If you get yourself invested in the characters, I think you're going to really like how some of them pay off in the end. But the interesting thing is outside of three or four characters, all of the character development is not mandatory, so if you don't really care about a character, you really never have to talk to them or find out anything about them, and you can just focus on the main characters or the characters that you like. That being said, a lot of the characters outside of the main cast just aren't given that much to do. With most of the crew members, you can talk to them every once in a while when something big is happening, and they'll give you a small, well, this is my opinion on the matter statement, and then that'll be the end of it. But if you keep piecing it all together by the end of the game, you should know a little bit about them and you should be a little more invested. The story starts out really good, and it's really fun getting to meet all of these new characters and then see how they develop through the course of the game, because since you're all trapped in a place where you're all probably going to die, it's really fun to see how each character reacts to that and how it changes them as a person. But I've got a pretty major problem with it near the, like, the last half of the game. At first, the character development everybody goes through is really subtle, and it's pretty fun to watch, but somewhere near the middle of the game, they just sort of start throwing subtlety completely out the window, and characters just start flat out saying how their character has been changing over the course of the game, which takes a lot of the fun out of it. It's like the first half of the game is written to be an intelligent story that you're supposed to pay attention to, and very mature, very adult, and then the last half, they just sort of go full on Sesame Street and start having everybody give you what you're supposed to be feeling. I could have done with less of that, but the game does pay off in the end. I think the ending to the game is absolutely fine, especially if you go for the neutral ending. For those who don't know, most Shin Megami Tensei games have a neutral ending and then one where you go one of two different directions. Go with the neutral ending. There's more gameplay, it's more fun, and you normally get a better ending. The major change from what I can see is in the story though, as there's a new character introduced pretty early on named Alex who is trying to kill you and everybody associated with the strike team. At first it's not totally understood who she is and what she's trying to do, but there's a new dungeon that opens up that's sort of like a play area where you can just go explore, you get a bunch of new demons that you couldn't get in the original, and you get a bunch more experience points and maka and all kinds of other stuff for exploring it, and as you go through you get a little bit more backstory on who she is. It's not super important to the story because they just added it as a new fun thing for people who are just picking up Strange Journey Redux, but it's, it's satisfying enough that I went through it and it is pretty nice. To be honest, the Alex stuff and the new area called the Womb of Grief do feel a bit tacked on, mainly because they are so that people who played Strange Journey have something new to do in Strange Journey Redux, but 
The ending, I guess, is enhanced a little bit by her being there. Uh, in case you didn't know, there are new endings now that Alex is a new part of the game. But if you decide to ignore the new dungeon, you don't even have to worry about Alex at all, and you can essentially get the same endings that you could in the original game. I don't recommend you do that, honestly. It's a pretty long game. I think you should just go through the game normally and accept all of the new changes. Having Alex there doesn't detract from the story at all, it's just something that doesn't feel that necessary. And I imagine if you played the original and you're looking for some new story elements, you're going to get a kick out of where Alex's story goes. I guess we've danced around the gameplay long enough though, so let's talk about it. The game's a pretty standard dungeon crawler, similar to the Etrian games, which are also made by Atlas, so it totally makes sense. The mechanics? Haven't aged super well, do keep in mind that this is a 9 year old game so it's not like I can fairly compare it to today's games, but it definitely doesn't feel quite as polished as some of the newer Etrian Odysseys do. It's not horrible, it's just rough around the edges. Things like not being able to walk backwards, uh, there's a crap ton of backtracking. Let me give you a hint if you're deciding to pick this game up. Uh, when you get the ability to unlock certain doors in past areas, don't go back immediately and open those doors, because the story is going to force you into going back to the old areas to do stuff to continue on with the story. And while it's fine at first, it does start to get a little bit repetitive. The combat in the game is your standard RPG fare. There's not a whole lot different from other Shin Megami Tensei games. If you've never played a Shin Megami Tensei game, it's essentially just like a regular RPG, but... It's got sort of a Pokemon element where you can catch demons that you fight against by talking to them and convincing them to join you, essentially. I've always liked this idea, but I never feel like it's been implemented properly. The way you do this is by going through a conversation tree, but all of the answers feel so random. I never one time felt like I actually deduced what the game wanted me to say to somebody and I said it correctly. It seems completely random which answer will actually get the demon to join you and which one won't, so essentially it's just giving you a 1 in 3 chance of the demon liking you, and there's no way to really tell which answer is going to be the correct one until you try it and it fails. Most demons will have you correctly answer two of their questions, and then when you decide to ask them to join you, then they start asking for stuff. You can give them life, you can give them SP, you can give them items, you can give them money, and eventually at some point they'll decide to join you, or they'll say, eh, I don't really feel like it, and they'll fly away. It's not a bad system by any means, but it's just so horribly outclassed by some of the Shin Megami Tensei games we got after that. Um, I'd say that Devil Survivor and Shin Megami Tensei 4 are just such shining examples of what Shin Megami Tensei is capable of. While this is a good game, I wouldn't recommend playing it over those two games if you haven't already. Outside of the battles, there's a few things to do. You can go on side quests when you meet random characters in the stages. Uh, you can go to the lab and develop new items and equipment and such. Uh, it, you unlock some features here where you can find hidden items and hidden doors and such. The hidden items was kind of fun at first because it was like a little treasure hunt, but at some point you've got to start ignoring it because hidden items just start showing up so often in so many hard-to-reach places that... It just takes too much time and effort to go get them, and normally when you go get them, you don't really even get anything that's special for it. One thing that really hurts this game is that exploration feels like a chore, because there's just so much random crap that pops up that never really amounts to anything. When you get to the further dungeons, there are time wasters everywhere. Every floor of some of the dungeons are just set up to waste as much of your time as possible, and it feels like a really cheap way to pad out the length of the game. It starts out with one area that has panels that hurt you, so it more just deters you from going uh, certain ways, and like it, it sort of encourages you to take the long ways around, but you could choose to take shortcuts if you want to if you don't mind taking damage. But the later dungeons will literally force you into just taking the most tedious, long, boring paths possible. I think the idea here was to make some of the shortcuts you unlock later in the game more interesting and relevant, but honestly it just sort of padded out the gameplay and made some of the dungeons really annoying to explore. One nice thing though is you can unlock special abilities called sub-apps that allow you to get through some of the dungeons a little easier, 
You get some that refill your HP and MP based on how many spaces you walk. You get some that will stop demons from appearing so often. And you even get one very useful app near the beginning of the game that will stop demons that are a certain number of levels lower than you from showing up altogether. Which makes it much easier to go back and explore the older areas because you don't have a new random battle every 5 seconds that doesn't really yield any results. While I am very thankful for this feature, it does make some of the backtracking a bit more tedious because without the battles you're literally just running through a first person dungeon with nothing to stop you and uh, looking for whatever it is the story wants you to find before you progress, but I guess your mileage may vary. The difficulty curve in the game is also just completely jacked. At no point does the game ever become super difficult, I think Etrian Odyssey is where you want to go if you're looking for a challenge even just on normal. There are some dungeons, man, where the first floor the demons are completely pushovers and you can get through it with no problem at all. And then you get to the second floor and the second floor is ten times harder than the first floor. But then you get to the third floor and all of a sudden they're reusing demons from the first floor and it's all of a sudden easy again and it doesn't make any sense. Like, the game never feels like it's getting progressively harder, it feels like it just sort of gets harder or easier at complete random at random points during the game. The last thing I want to talk about is this Womb of Grief that they added for the Redux. This place is really fun, it's actually where I spent a lot of my playtime. I highly recommend checking it out, even though it's an optional thing, as early as possible. You get these really fun side quests, and even though I don't think it's got a great story, I do like finding out more about what's going on with it. It starts out a bit more lighthearted than the main story does, but then again it does shift. That story gets a bit more serious, while the main story gets a bit more lighthearted, so it's kind of a mess. But there are so many fun bosses to defeat, and so many great side quests to do. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun to play through, and some of the parts really challenge you and push you a lot farther than the main story does. My only concern with the area is it does overlevel you just a little bit. I don't know who is in charge of assigning experience and money for the demons in the Womb of Grief, but I think they misbalanced it just a little bit, because after I kept up with the Womb of Grief, nothing in the main game was a challenge anymore. Bosses are complete pushovers compared to their variants in the Womb of Grief. You just get so many levels and so many good demons that nothing in the main story can challenge you anymore. It's a cakewalk. So once you start the Womb of Grief, it's where you're going to get all of your main gameplay, and the story's just going to become a side thing that unlocks more of the Womb of Grief, essentially. But, that's about it. If you've never played Strange Journey, and it's been a while since your last Shin Megami Tensei game, and you love RPGs, I give this game its full worth it price of $40. It can be a bit tedious at times, and it's not the greatest example of what an Atlas dungeon crawler is capable of, but it is also 9 years old, so you do have to take that into consideration. I do still stand by Devil Survivor and Shin Megami Tensei 4 though, if you haven't played those yet, play those instead and then come back to this later. If you've never really played a Shin Megami Tensei game outside of like Persona, and you're looking for a great place to get into the series with, then this is a pretty great game at about $30. The series is so fun and unique, and the gameplay loop of getting new demons and fusing them, and then using them to convince more demons to join you and fusing them together, just creates hours and hours and hours of gameplay, and you haven't even realized that any of it's gone by. It hasn't aged super well, so keep that in mind, but I think $30 is about the sweet spot for you. Now, if you've played the original game and you're somebody who keeps up with the Shin Megami Tensei games pretty regularly, and maybe it hasn't been that long since your last Shin Megami Tensei game, I give this game a worth it price of about $25. It will still be a lot of fun if you put it on one of its harder difficulties and you take a lot of time to explore the new dungeon, Womb of Grief, but outside of that, the story is just a bit too tedious for me to recommend you go through it again, and you're really not going to get so much out of the Womb of Grief that it really justifies buying this game at its full price. But when you see it somewhere used for about $25, then I highly recommend checking it out. While I wouldn't say this is one of Atlas's greatest Shin Megami Tensei games, I would say it's a very good one that is worth your time. I'm giving Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux an impressive 6 
out of 10. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!